Hey, I'm James, and in this video I'm going to discuss the anatomy of the perineum, with a focus on muscles, arteries, and nerves. This video is aimed at those who are wanting an introduction to this anatomy, or are after some revision content. Although this is a standalone video, it may be worth watching our previous videos on the bony pelvis and the pelvic floor if you have not covered this anatomy already. Subscribe to Geeky Medics to be the first to know when we release new videos. The perineum is located superficial to levator ani. It is a small, predominantly fat-filled compartment with quite a lot of structures stuffed into it. The same osteofibrous structures that form the boundaries of the pelvic outlets also form the boundaries of the perineum. So let's quickly review. Posteriorly is the coccyx. Posterior laterally are the sacral tuberous ligaments. Laterally are the ischial tuberosities. Anterior laterally are the ischiopubic rami. And anteriorly is the pubic symphysis. The diamond that is formed by these boundaries can be further subdivided by an imaginary line between the ischial tuberosities, forming the urogenital triangle anteriorly and the anal triangle posteriorly. The roof of the perineum is the fascia that is attached to the inferior surface of the pelvic floor. The floor of the perineum is in two parts. Over the urogenital triangle, the perineal fascia or collies fascia forms the floor. I would encourage you to read about this layer of fascia in some detail because knowledge of this anatomy will allow you to understand how blood and urine may spread following trauma to the perineum. Most popular anatomy texts with clinical correlations will describe this. The floor of the anal triangle is the skin and fascia that is superficial to the large quantity of fat in the region. I now want to draw your attention to another membranous layer, the perineal membrane. This membrane covers the urogenital triangle. It does not extend beyond the imaginary line through the ischial tuberosities. The perineal membrane adds a slight layer of complexity to the urogenital triangle, as it further divides this region into two pouches, the deep and superficial perineal pouches. The deep pouch is deep to the perineal membrane, and the superficial pouch is superficial, hopefully nice and easy so far. This membrane is mostly a continuous sheet across the urogenital triangle, except where it is pierced by structures passing through, such as the urethra in males, or the urethra and vagina in females, and various neurovascular structures. As you might expect, there are some key differences between male and female anatomy in this region. So I am going to remove some of the anatomy on the female model I have here, and we'll add the male model on the screen. At the moment, we are looking at the female deep perineal pouch. The majority of the muscles that we see here are sphincters that constrict the structures passing through the perineal membrane. On the female model, we can see the external urethral sphincter, compressor urethra, and urethrovaginalis. These are striated muscles that mostly act to constrict the urethra, but also the vagina in the case of urethrovaginalis. On the male model, the anatomy is much easier because there is only one muscle to consider, the external urethral sphincter. At the free edge of the perineal membrane, which would be here on the model, is the deep transverse perineal muscle, which offers structural support to the area. I will add the perineal membrane and erectile tissue back to the model. With the perineal membrane included, we are now looking at the superficial perineal pouch. The erectile tissue in males and females is mostly similar, though with some obvious key differences. On the female model, we can see medially the bulbs of the vestibule and laterally the crura. Note that the bulbs are only connected anteriorly. The vaginal orifice is located here. The erectile tissue extends anteriorly towards the clitoris. The crura form the corpora cavernosa and the bulbs connect to the glands. On the male model, we can see similar structures. The bulb of the penis is in the midline and the crura are lateral. This erectile tissue extends anteriorly into the shaft of the penis. The crura extend to form the corpora cavernosa and the bulb extends to form the corpus spongiosum. The muscles of the superficial perineal pouch are mostly superficial to the erectile tissue and function to maintain erection by pushing blood into the clitoris or penis and compressing outflow veins that would otherwise drain blood from the erectile tissue. The muscles are the same in males and females, but once again with an obvious difference. On the female model, we can see the ischiocavernosus muscles, superficial to the crura, and the bulbospongiosus muscles, superficial to the bulbs. The same applies in males, though the two bulbospongiosus muscles are fused in the midline. Much of our attention till now has been on the urogenital triangle, so let's quickly look at the anal triangle. This region is predominantly a fat-filled space that contains neurovascular structures that are passing towards the urogenital triangle. In the midline, we can see the opening of the anal canal and the external anal sphincter. 
The lateral margins of this triangle are the ischial anal or ischial rectal fossae, which we will look at more closely in a bit. The fat within the anal triangle extends anteriorly into the deep perineal pouch, but not the superficial perineal pouch. Earlier in the video, I said that the perineal fascia does not extend into the anal triangle. This fascia is tightly adhered to the free border of the perineal membrane, and so forms a barrier to the fat in the anal triangle. The fat is also continuous posterior to the anus. The extensions of this space are problematic because it allows for infection to spread quite easily. The final thing to talk about on this screen is the perineal body, and this perhaps is the most important structure on the model. It is a fibromuscular mass located here on the model. What you may be able to appreciate just by looking at this is that most of the muscles are attached to the perineal body. This includes levator ani. You should try and think of this as a spot world between the pelvic floor and the perineum. It offers a great deal of support for this area of the body. Any pathology to this region can lead to significant weakness, which can lead to incontinence, prolapse, or other complications. The remainder of the video will look at how nerves and arteries reach the perineum. The veins will be omitted from the model, though they largely follow a similar pattern to the arteries. The artery that supplies the lesser or true pelvis is the internal iliac artery. The internal iliac artery is a branch of the common iliac artery, which in turn arises from the abdominal aorta. The artery to the perineum we are interested in, and the one most of you will focus on, is the internal pudendal artery, which is a terminal branch of the internal iliac artery. There is an external pudendal artery, which arises from the femoral artery. The nerve that we will focus on is the pudendal nerve. The pudendal nerve arises from the ventral divisions of the second, third, and fourth sacral spinal nerves. The artery and the nerve leave the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, inferior to the piriformis muscle. We can pick up the artery and nerve on the other side of the greater sciatic foramen. Here is piriformis, and the internal pudendal artery, and the pudendal nerve passing inferior to it. This view of the model is great to see how the nerve and artery pass between the sacral tuberous and sacral spinous ligaments to enter the perineum. Whilst we are here, it is also worth pointing out the sciatic nerve, which will be the most obvious nerve in the region when you look at this in the anatomy lab. You should be using the piriformis muscle, the ligaments, and the sciatic nerve as reference points to identify the internal pudendal artery and pudendal nerve. Be warned, structures passing towards the perineum can be quite difficult to identify in the lab. I will rotate the model again to look at the anal triangle. The sacral tuberous ligament is in the way, so I will take that out. The internal pudendal artery and pudendal nerve pass within the ischioanal fossa. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that the ischioanal fossae are the lateral extensions of the anal triangle. The ischioanal fossa is bounded by levator ani medially and obturator internus laterally. The internal pudendal artery and pudendal nerve are pushed up against obturator internus. In vivo, there would be a layer of fascia covering obturator internus and this forms a tunnel for which the pudendal nerve and internal pudendal vessels pass. This is known as the pudendal canal or Alcox canal. Within the canal, the nerve and artery give off the inferior rectal branches that pass towards the external anal sphincter. At some point, the pudendal nerve divides into the dorsal nerve of the clitoris or penis and perineal nerve and the perineal artery arises from the internal pudendal artery. The dorsal nerve of the clitoris or penis passes within the deep perineal pouch and the perineal nerve passes within the superficial pouch. The internal pudendal artery continues within the deep pouch and the perineal artery passes within the superficial pouch. The names and patterns of the nerves and vessels between males and females are similar, so I will stay with the female model as we have a look at the deep perineal pouch. The dorsal nerve of the clitoris, or penis, extends anteriorly along the ischiopubic ramus, deep to the perineal membrane. It will supply the crura and the clitoris or penis. The internal pudendal artery passes deep to the membrane and gives branches to the erectile tissue, the urethra, and clitoris or penis. So what about the superficial pouch? Well, the perineal nerve divides into the posterior labial or scrotal nerves and muscular branches, though the muscular branches are not included on in the model. The posterior labial or scrotal nerves supply the skin of the labia or scrotum. The muscular branches supply the musculature in the superficial pouch and the urethral sphincters. The perineal artery provides branches to the labia or scrotum, the transverse perineal muscles, and the perineal body. So that's me on the perineum. 
In subsequent videos, we will look at the male and female reproductive anatomy. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought of this video and what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. You can do this by leaving a comment or dropping us an email.